David Schnell Davis, and together we're docked in order. So this, this is the problem. This is my office. These are actual client files, and I'm a practicing attorney, if you couldn't guess. As you can see, these happen to be loan modification documents, but really what we created is for anyone who has anyone who has a lot of paperwork. And this could be discovery, it could be evidence. The point is to organize a lot of files. Because as an attorney, you need to know what you have, what you need, and what you have sent. The problem, of course, is the other side always says, but I didn't get it. You have to be able to prove it. So I needed a solution. And fortunately, I have an ex-husband who knows something about databases. <laughs> <laughs> Amber came to me, and she essentially asked me to write a checklist program for her staff so that they could keep track of the documents they had and where they'd been sent. But I'm a computer engineer. <coughs> And I like making really useful software. So I went and talked to her staff and took a close look at how they were actually processing documents. And what I discovered was that they had five related problems, only one of which a checklist program would have completely solved. So I created a product for Amber that addressed all five of these problems. The first one, of course, is that it organizes or orders documents. It enables them to, set, to see at a glance what they have and what they need. But in addition to that, it enables them to load documents directly into the program. And that lets them share those documents both within the office and with other collaborating attorneys and clients. Then they can combine them together and they can send them out to the opposition. And after that, very importantly, they can create reports that can prove that those documents have been sent. And it worked. <laughs> exactly. So instead of charging clients $4,500, I was able to charge them $2,500. I was able to cut my attorney and staff time in half. And I was able to take 50 clients more than I would have without the software, without adding additional staff. This gave me a competitive advantage all the way around. So once Amber and I saw how well the program worked for her, we realized that other attorneys could benefit from it as well. And there are over 1.2 million attorneys in the United States. Over a third of these are sole practitioners, exactly like Amber. And at first, we thought that this would be our primary market. But rather than make assumptions, we went out and talked directly to attorneys. And I discovered something that in hindsight shouldn't have surprised me. Nearly all attorneys deal with large volumes of paperwork. And I've talked to attorneys, even in very large firms, and who work for government agencies, who are extremely excited about the product that we're building. And in addition to that, another thing that I discovered is that attorneys have staff, sometimes lots of staff. And that staff can also benefit from our product. In fact, in Amber's office, I have seen Amber's assistant, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Um, use the product more than Amber does. So. This is really just the initial market because attorneys aren't the only ones who have a lot of documents. Anyone who has a lot of documents could benefit from ordering and organizing their documents. So before I asked an ex-husband to build the software, I did a little research and I was looking for an attorney specific software or program or online application and what I found is there was not a simple solution. This market is filled with complex, complicated, and expensive programs that did not suit my needs. This market needs to be disrupted. And so Amber showed this to me, and one of the first things that I noticed was that all of the paid alternatives all charge per user per month. And this was yet another way in which they didn't fully suit the needs of sole practicing attorneys. Sole practitioners often have a lot of part-time and temporary staff and a per user uh, revenue model forces them to share accounts between employees, which is bad for security. So we decided that since we created a product to solve the problem simply, we also wanted to make it available simply. So this is how we do it. First, unlimited user accounts, no extra charge. This means that if you have a temporary employee, you can give them their own account, and when they leave, you can turn off that account and improve security. 
If you want to share documents with a client, the client gets an account. If you want to share documents with another attorney, that attorney gets their own account. And as a side effect, since that attorney now has their own account, it makes them that much easier for that attorney to create their own projects. Then, instead of charging for user accounts, we charge based on how people actually use the system per project. Specifically, we charge $1 per active project per month. Now, I've been told that this price appears low, but it actually scales quite well. For example, as a software engineer, I'm very familiar with GitHub, which has a remarkably similar pricing model in charging for private repositories. And for us, it's fortunate that attorneys have a lot of projects. An average solo practitioner, similar to Amber, usually has between 50 and 75 open projects every month. And attorneys that work for larger offices and have bigger staffs have much more than this. And remember, there are over 1.2 million attorneys in the United States. That's a lot of projects. So, as an expansion model, first we're going to reach out to our fellow alumni, and we've already reached out to them at Boyd Law School, and then our fellow practitioners that we know. Next, we'll reach out to what we know and who we know, solo practitioners in Clark County. And we would like to do this first with our beta testers and then expanding. But as we expand, we believe we have a natural referral mechanism because attorneys and staff will already be using the product and already have accounts. So it's easy for them to have their own accounts. So then we believe we can expand nationwide. So, who are we? My partner, Amber Davis, indeed has deep roots in the Nevada community. Her family has been here for eight generations. Amber also has strong ties to the legal community. She grew up first participating in and later running her father's political campaign, sorry, successful political campaign for North Las Vegas judge. After college, fortunately for me, she took a break one year between political seasons to open a computer service business, which is what she was doing when I met her. Oh, and she has three beautiful children. <laughs> so David has only been here for 22 years. I know. He started the first web design and hosting company in Las Vegas. And for the last 20 years, he's been designing web apps as a full stack developer. He also has three amazing children. <laughs> We are very much involved in our community, both the Las Vegas community in which we live and the legal community in which we work. And these communities have been incredibly good to us. And one of the core values of our company is that we want to give back to those communities. And one of the ways in which we want to do that is to learn about and use current technologies to solve real world problems as simply and elegantly as possible. So, when we began at the mill, we had a product that had been in use for two years, heavily. but heavily used for two years. And it was a single firm, my firm, model. It wasn't scalable at all. And we've been told it had a seriously dated UI. Something about the hot pink. It happens to be one of Amber's favorite colors. So, now, a mere 11 weeks later, we've come a long way. We are currently in the midst of developing the 2.0 version of our product, which has been rebuilt from the ground up to make it multi-firm, multi-user, and much, much more scalable. We're hoping to enter beta testing with this new version soon. And related to that, if you are an attorney, or if you know an attorney, or if you know someone with a lot of documents that they need to organize, come talk to us. But our most pressing concern is that we're currently seeking to expand our team again and find a business development person. Sorry. <laughs> We've been here a long time, and we're going to be here a long time. Many of you in the audience we already know, and we're glad you're here. Thank you for coming. And for those of you we have not yet met, we look forward to meeting you. Thank you. Thank you.